Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Software Engineer K, and today we're going to be looking at some of the potential blockers to the release of Neo 3.0. So a lot of people have been um, in discussion of Neo 3.0, so we're going to be getting testnet um, in March and mainnet in June. That's the prediction. Our Neo 3.0 has had a lot of delays in the past, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking through their code base and just highlighting what it is that's currently blocking the release, and just go through from my um, personal experience what I suspect um, if any of these uh, uh, blockers are serious and whether we will see Neo 3.0 soon um, just because there have been a lot of people um, you know proclaiming that we will get another delay you know, because you know that's just what Neo does but um, I just want to show you guys just um, you know as transparently as possible um, what exactly is Neo has been working on and just from you know my own uh, experience whether it is going to be an issue so um, if you're new to the channel I would appreciate a like and subscribe if you'd, uh, just to support the content um, I'm just going to be giving you guys pure information uh, I'm not here trying to you know sell you um, any kind of specific cryptocurrency you know promote buying it or not I'm just giving you pure information um, so that hopefully you can use it and along with your own analysis to you know inform you what you want to do next um, so um, here we are on Neo's main repository so um, if we just go to um, pull requests um, so I have done this in my previous video where I showed you some of the previous um, features that they've closed off and um, if we just go to close there was a feature that they closed recently and recently we had um, Neo's status um, update from 96% complete to 97 so this tag here indicates that this was the feature that allowed us to move up to 97% uh, complete for Neo 3.0 so if you just click into that um, it will take us to the current milestone so you can see that we're 97% complete and these are the open um, features left so these are what currently needs to be complete in order for um, Neo 3.0 to be 100% complete here so um, if we just start from the top um, and just work our way down so uh, Chinese code summary and comments. So this is one of the uh, features that needs to be closed or one of the issues that needs to be closed off. So this one um, isn't actually much of a concern at all. Um, essentially what this is, is if we just have a look here, wouldn't be better to have all code comments um, in English or at least English and Chinese because um, obviously Neo, um, the Neo Foundation is a Chinese company. Um, da Hongfei, you know, the uh, founder, he's um, obviously... Um, Chinese himself so a lot of the developers are also um, Chinese and there's this whole translation problem where you know some people who do want to listen into um, what um, Neo has been talking about um, they always ask for translations and it's the same in the code base so this isn't much of an issue at all um, it's more of an internal thing um, so this I'm not concerned about at all um, this is probably I imagine one of the last things that's going to be resolved and if we go back so that's fine um, native contract for NeoFS. So here's a couple of things here. Um, for those of you who don't know NeoFS, um, so this is going to be a new system for distributed storage. So essentially what happens is you can run a node on the Neo network and you can rent out um, storage space to um, users and they will pay you in gas. And if you had uh, followed my previous video, and this is a call I made um, over a month ago, um, I said that gas is going to have um, a lot more use cases moving forward in uh, Neo3. So, you know, do be um, conscious of that. So um, what you would do is you would rent out your storage space and um, users can rent it and it will pay you in gas and that's all going to be facilitated using smart contracts so it is um, decentralized and there's um, a few other like uh, pretty cool concepts um, just regarding that as well so um, there are incentives um, for users and it follows um, a concept of kind of a I guess open market competition so I'll go into a bit of that later on so this um, so a contract, um, if we just focus on the contract side, so in software engineering, um, when we talk about contracts, we talk about um, exposing API methods. So um, an API is just essentially a layer um, on top of your domain and it allows you to interact with um, different objects. Um, so uh, here we have a couple of uh, methods. So balance, uh, you want to be able to withdraw a balance um, and an IR note, so registering voting. So this says, um, a bit to do with the um, NeoFS as well, so um, users will get voting rights. And so here they're just talking about um, some of the API methods. So these are common ones um, put. So um, that's to update um, existing data, get to uh, retrie uh, retrieve data. Um, so this is a bit more of a design concept. And 
it's not too much of an issue um, from what I can see this was all done in 2019 so I imagine they have um, uh, ironed out any of their architectural um, concepts by now and here we can see um, just a high level diagram um, high level technical diagram of just how um, what I was talking about just now would work so you have a new account and then you would have a smart contract and you know a user would get paid in gas for um, allowing the, um, someone to essentially rent out their storage space and yeah it seems pretty cool um, so this I believe isn't much of an issue either a um, bit more of an issue than documentation but not that much of an issue NeoFS URI standard okay so um, URIs um, essentially just another word for URL um, so when we talk about things like um, data persistence in databases quite commonly um, we have this idea of a schema um, and then within there you have like these kind of um, tables and then within those tables you might have you know additional kind of like individual columns etc so this is, again is just another design concept here so they're just um, kind of debating about you know the, the, the approach they're going to take to design so um, this um, here, so NeoFS would be the schema, and then the container ID would be this long alphanumeric string, and then you've got your object ID here. And it looks like they're just debating about, you know, what kind of URA standard they should use, should it have metadata at the end. Uh, that's not really much of a concern at all. So again, not really concerned there. And the last one, um, NeoFS API list, and looks like they've got some documentation. Um, we can have a look at that. Okay, um, that's just going to take us to a GitHub, um, a separate um, repo, so never mind. Um, what about this? Okay, same one. Okay, so it looks like, again, um, this is just to do with um, documentation. So this isn't much of an issue, um, I think. Okay, so they're talking about... Um, adding additional API methods, so adding remove to the API contract um, because you need to modify metadata, that's fine. Um, so this was all done in like 2019, but uh, they've left it open. Um, it's usually best um, best practice to any kind, anything related to kind of like documentation, you don't close off because, you know, as you as your code evolves, you will need to update the documentation. So that's kind of like one of the last things, last issues that you would resolve. But again, I'm not really concerned about that either. So that all seems good. So um, it looks like out of all four of these issues, I'm not concerned about any of them being huge blockers. Um, so that should all be good. Um, but I do quite like this um, whole idea of NeoFS as well. So um, if you have a look here, so NeoFS public distributed de decentralized object storage. So NeoFS, um, like I said earlier, is just going to be the decentralized storage system. So um, users can rent out storage in return for Neo gas tokens or use gas to store files in the network. So like I said earlier, gas is going to have much greater use case. And if we just have a scroll down here, um, we can see designed to work reliably in a chaotic environment. Okay, yeah, most people would say that. And let's see if there's anything interesting. So this is the high-level architectural diagram I showed earlier. Um, so NeoGas is going to be used for payments in this system. And yeah. Um, oh, this is this is quite cool. So incentive model and pricing. So this is what I talked about earlier about um, driving this kind of open free market principle. So essentially each node declares how much it wants to give as a reward and data storage services for the upcoming um, epoch. So um, if you are running a node, you can essentially kind of set your pricing. But in short, if nodes are too greedy, so your prices for the gas are too high for what you're providing, then you don't get any rewards basically. Um, so if you do want to have higher prices, then you need to provide something um, unique as they've said. Um, not quite sure what they mean by something unique. Um, could be various other services, but um, we'll see as we um, get around to that. So I quite like this model because it helps drive free open market competition. Um, users are getting um, incentivized to run nodes, uh, provide these services. And again, um, this is something that, like I said earlier, a lot of developers are going to be um, shifting over to just because of all of the benefits provided that I mentioned in my previous video um, and as these developers um, are shifting over you know storage is a big issue so um, users who are providing that storage um, 
they will get paid in gas and i believe you know my personal um perspective is gas will have a greater demand uh, moving forwards with neo free so um that's pretty much exactly what i want to go through today guys um so thank you so much for watching please do like and subscribe to support the content and i'll hopefully keep you guys updated as i follow this and i'll see you guys in the next video see ya